All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, tonight. I know it's it's busy, it's hot, um, and here we are. So I appreciate that you're here. I also appreciate that we have Phil Briggs, who's um, giving us some some fun win-win results uh, this evening. I've looked ahead at what he's doing, and uh, yeah, this is going to be an engaging one. Uh, everybody's going to get to uh, say their piece, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, before we launch into that, uh, there have been some nice plays plays of the Fortnite put out recently, and I want to make sure nobody misses those. We haven't um, we haven't had as many people as we expected, and there's been some really good investment that's that's gone into these. So I'm putting into the link or into the chat a link to um, to be able to look at the plays of the Fortnite that we put out this year, and actually the entire history that we have cataloged. Uh, and I'll I'll remind you all at the end, um, so that hopefully you maybe do it afterwards or tomorrow or something, and. Uh, and focus on Phil's very engaging discussion. Um, I will uh, not be very detailed in my introduction of Phil. He's been around since I started refereeing. Uh, and I it took me maybe 10 years to be able to parse him out from Bob Hurwitz because they both had that facial hair. And that was all I recognized way back then. <laughs> Um, and they they knew the refereeing. So with those two similarities, I couldn't tell them apart. But with that, thank you very much, Phil, for doing this again. I think you've taught every year for us. Um, and I'll, the floor is yours. Okie doke. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Lewis kind of twisted my arm a week ago with the uh, with the tournament, the national games coming up within the week. He was looking for some little exercises to kind of get people thinking about the, about the games. And so what we kind of arrived at was kind of a mishmash of scenarios from the national course. So this should all be fresh in your mind, Robert. Uh, the, uh, we, we mashed together a little bit of the uh, dealing with anger and resistance with the putting it all together modules. Uh, so uh, we're, we're going to do a lot of scenarios tonight, and I hope we have a little, little bit of fun on them. We can take our time discussing them. And uh, like I say, let's, uh, let's have a little fun. I, I hope you appreciate this cartoon I, I found that I had squirreled away on one of my storage drives from oh, a million years ago. So, uh, uh, so let's, let's have at it, if I can change my page here. There we go. Okay. What I want to talk a little bit about is in every game you do, there's what we call a moment of truth. And it, it can be a big thing or it can be a small thing. But the, the key is, is, is it's that moment in a game where you make a decision which kind of dictates how well that game is going to go for you. And if you do it right, your game progresses really nicely. And if you do it wrong, uh, you have a real problem out there. Now, now I opened up with this for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, uh, many times the moment of truth is a situation where you're dealing with a player or a coach in a situation that may involve dissent or some other type of confrontation uh, with, with that individual. Um, and the second thing is, I just wanted to get a little, little bit back from you guys. Have, it, do you guys have any examples of moments of truth that you've survived in matches you've done recently? That means you're gonna have to unmute to talk to me, you know. I have. <clears throat> okay. Uh, sort sort of a moment of truth. Uh, I had to expel or to ask the coach to send a parent off. Uh, it was during uh, the pot of gold tournament, and uh, it was at the fourteen level, and my AR was being harassed repeatedly. 
And uh, the coach stood there initially just watching it, not trying to restrain the parent. And so I, just, I went up to him and uh, just told him that we, we had to do something about this and that uh, that parent had to leave. Um, he was he was actually getting into AR's way repeatedly, even threatening the AR verbally. Um, so we sent the parent off. Uh, unfortunately, the tournament allowed the parent to come back uh, to a corner flag position, and I addressed that and had the parent sent off again. Uh, but the interaction with the coach was always positive. Okay. So how did the match go following this, this, uh, this incident? Uh, the match, the match went well. Uh, there was no, uh, dissent or disagreement from the coaches on either side, other than, uh, the coach on the other side was wondering what the delay was about. He was in the dark. So at a, at uh, the end of the game, I explained to him what was going on. So he understood uh, that uh, uh, it wasn't just us wasting time. Okay. How early did you intervene? Uh, this was in the uh, second quarter, early in the second quarter of the game. And it was mm -hmm. my understanding that in the first quarter, uh, some of the uh, harassment was taking place. Okay, so so there was a history of harassment before you intervened with the with the parent. Then. That's correct. <clears throat> okay, just trying to get trying to get a sense of it. <clears throat> did the, uh, uh, did just you how did, how, more did you, how did your AR communicate this with you? Uh, I had uh, instructed my ARs if they wanted to talk to me uh, that during a, a break in a game, hold her flag up to get my attention and then put it across her chest. Uh, and then I would come over and have a discussion. And apparently I had missed the first indication from my AR. So she had stepped onto the pitch a little bit and that got my attention. And then I went over to find out what was going okay. on. Uh, and okay. just one last piece of information. The AR was, uh, Cindy Elliott. Oh, okay. <laughs> a certainly capable person. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, so you had a moment of truth. You dealt with the problem, and then you felt like that solved problems for the rest of the for the match, or at least for the rest of that half. Yes, it did. Okay. And uh, yes. Okay. Anybody? Anybody? Good. Thank you, Chris. Anybody else have any examples of of uh, moments of truth that they've had? I'm getting this deafening silence. Okay. Well, given that, thank you, Chris, for sharing. Let's let's kind of move on a little bit. Uh, what, as I said earlier, uh, a, a lot, quite often uh, the moments of truth happen uh, when you get into a, 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 a dissent-like situation with a player or coach. And let's focus a little bit on players now. Dissent happens because players get emotional about what's going on on the field and what's going on with the match. You know, it's, it's their game. They get very emotional about that. So what are, what are some of the things they react emotionally to your turn to chime in, Robert. Being called for a foul. Sure. That's, that's one. What else? What about you, Cindy? Uh, feeling like maybe the calls are balanced, not balanced, and that their team is not getting the, a fair shake in, in the calls. Okay, I was so gonna, you're, I say you're, not you're, getting called, not getting foul calls that they think they should get. Correct, okay, what else? So you talked about game situations, this is about game situations, they react emotionally to game situations. All right, and referee decisions. Well, and referee decision. I think sometimes that I've had in particular one where kids are getting on their other teammates that aren't performing as well as they are. Um, and yeah, 
happened a few times. You mean, mean teammates' actions, huh? Yeah. yeah, that happens, as well as getting frustrated with themselves. And the obvious one is the opponent getting frustrated with an opponent can lead to an emotional outburst. And my favorite one is sometimes it just comes out of the blue. So as referees, we need to be prepared to manage all of these situations. So let's let's talk. We're going to do some scenarios in a few minutes. So I want you to keep this in mind that that uh, your job as the referee is to manage players' emotions to some extent, keep them focused on the game. The key thing is whose game is it? It's the player's game. And so as referees, our job is to manage it so that they have a good game. It's not about us out there. And so we need to we need to use our smiling personalities to manage a lot of stuff that goes on out in the field. So I talked in the title of this chart about win-win. So can somebody tell me what win-win means? Dave, you want to take a crack at it? Sure. I, I mean, it's when all parties kind of walk away with a, either a mutual understanding or, and happy with the outcome or at least understand the outcome. Maybe not happy, but can see the outcome of the situation. And they don't feel like they lost or getting anything um, okay. against them. Good, good definition. Anybody have anything to add to that? Chris? I would add having them feel like they were heard. Really. Okay, good. Good thought. I like that. So let's take a, let's take a slightly different crack at this. From the referee's point of view and for the referee, what is a win-win? What, what sorts of thing constitutes a win-win? I think uh, we're able to call the game as we believe uh, we've seen it in a fair manner. Okay. That's part, that's part of it. Okay. While also uh, maintaining, you know, a level of decorum on the touch lines that, that is reasonable, you know, okay. not, not letting that also, get out of control. I would think also in letting the players play as much of their game as they can. Okay, let's 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 drill in a little bit more, uh, less globally. Uh, let's talk about for a particular instance on the field that you've identified as something you need to deal with. What's a win-win for you? When you get when when you're able to make the call that the game needs and the player uh, and touchline and you know are able to uh, accept it and feel like it's fair. That would okay, be win-win okay. for for me. I made a call, uh, a difficult call, or or even whatever, any call, and they they say yes. That seems like it, it was fair. Okay, I, I I like all those definitions. Uh, the here's here here was the list that I put together. This for me the win-win is if I get a positive behavior change and what's going on there after this event, and then the match continues in a positive manner. The other thing that's a win-win is kind of selfish, but it's, it's was I able to accomplish this with the minimum punishment with respect to maintaining good match control? In other words, did I, did I, could, I, could I safely avoid bringing down the big hammer? So think, you know, that, that's something to think about, at least from my point of view, that's a win-win for a referee when he can manage the situation without, without going to the, to the heaviest tool that he has. What do you guys think about that? Two thumbs up over here. Now, let's turn it around a little bit, okay? From the point of view of the player or coach, you know, one of the other participants that's a non-referee participant, what do you think their definition of a win-win is? Again, let's assume we have an incident we're dealing with. 
Cindy? I'm gonna echo I'm gonna echo Cindy's statement is that they feel like they got heard. Yeah. Okay, uh, good. I like that. Whether 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 you agree or disagree with the coach, the, the fact that they got heard probably a lot of times is just yes, yes, I understand, but this is the way it's going. And that kind of just de-escalates the situation. Okay, that's fair. I like that. What else? The player or coach feels that the game will continue in a safe manner and safety was, was considered. Yeah, I think that's another good, another really good thought. Because after all, we're on the same page there. We want it to go on positively. They want it to go on positively. And by positive, it means safe and fair, okay? Anything else? Oh, we talked about safe and fair. We got to mention fun. Yeah, okay. We do have that out there. That's, that's another one of our overriding concerns. Okay, here's the list I put together. And, and, and I, I thank Cindy for coming up with it, for mentioning this. The key thing is I was heard. That does not mean you engage in debate with the player or the coach. But the, the reality is you need to listen to what they're trying to tell you. Because what can that tell you? Robert, what, what can that tell you, Robert? Something you may not be seeing that you want to see, but you just haven't seen it if you listen to them. You know. Right. That that's that that could be which which is telling you what. I like that answer. What's it telling you though? Perhaps uh it's gonna suggest to you you may need to change your positioning. You you may need to change something about what you're doing. Okay, I like that. Anything else on the I was heard? The the, the other thing that I want to stress is for both of us, match continuing, I think match continuing in a positive manner is is a win-win for both sides. But the last bullet is really a sub, it's either a superset or a subset of the I was heard, but the referee needs to be respectful. If the referee is respectful and in the player's coach's mind uses common sense to deal with something, I think that's a win from their side. Anybody disagree or have any other comments about that? Dave? Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Anything more from you, Cindy? You've had some good comments tonight. Mm. I, I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I just echo the, the, they feel respected and they feel like they can accept the resolution without losing face. So they, yeah. Okay. The, the reason I'm drilling down on this is I want you to think about win-win situations, not just from your viewpoint, but from the viewpoint of the typically of the player. So when you make your decisions, you need to be thinking both what, what makes sense. And uh, so what I want to do now is give you a little tool and then we'll get into some scenarios. So <clears throat> I think we, <clears throat> we all know what dissent is. So I'm not going to talk about what dissent is, but I have a little tool called called calm. And the first part of that is composure. So what exactly is composure, Chris? Uh, keeping yourself together, not losing it. Yeah. Any, anything else? Keith, you look like you want to add something. No, I would no, no, no. I, I, I don't. Um, I'm afraid to talk because of the echo. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. I, I like that. The, uh, the key thing I came up with is, is you're confident. You're maintaining your cool, which is what you talked about, Chris. The one thing I, I, as I see as part of com composure is you watch your own body language. You use your body language as the appropriate tool that generates calm generates whatever you need, whatever whatever emotion you need to project with it. Uh, but uh, that's part that's part of the composure part. Okay, the second the second item is approachable. What 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 does that mean? 
Okay, Keith, give me yours. What, what, what does it mean to be approachable? Did we lose Keith? <laughs> He's carrying a box. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Oh, okay. Um, approachable, kind of, I, I wanted to add on to composure, but approachable is a great segue to it. It's so with your demeanor, you don't want to swing too far to being walled off and resistant to the descent, but you also don't want to cower in the face of it. So you want to be confident and cool. You want to stay level. I like that. that. So being approachable is not swinging too far to the confident end of it. But going back to we talk about our win-win, what does that invite? What does approachable invite? Uh, listening. Listening. I like that. Yes. So that's that's what I had here. You're you're open to the either player or coach's concerns. Respectful. Respect is a large part of what we what we do as referees. And you listen. So I like that. Okay, let's put our third our third bullet. Language. What do I mean by language? Robert, you want to give me a shot at what 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 does language mean? I can tell you what it doesn't mean first. Okay. You don't say to the coach, shut up and go back and sit at the bench. Oh, oh, okay. I'm kind of joking around because we're really serious here, but you definitely yeah. want to say that. Um, and I've definitely had my failures, but um, language, you want to be respectful and polite, but, okay. firm, but firm. And if you can back up whatever you're, you've been doing with, with some, you know, language from the law, that can help. Okay. Okay, so you're saying respectful and be precise or maybe unambiguous in your language. Yeah, I like that. And obviously no threats. So so again, uh, right, no, I just I want to say, you know, no ultimatums, no, you know, for for you or them, no painting yourself in a corner. Right. You know, right. and 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 that doesn't work. I mean it, it doesn't work for either of you, uh, yeah, either yeah. you or the party you're speaking to. Right. How often have you seen a referee paint themselves into a corner by saying, if you don't do this, I will do that? It happens. And we don't want it to happen. We want flexibility. And the last one is, is manage dissent proactively. What does that mean? Nipping it at the butt. You know, I when like it that starts, when it starts, right. when it starts, address it, address it, address it early, um, address it early. And I threw in an ad a couple of years ago. You guys were working on refereeing with personality. This is the good place to use your personality to deal with this. You like that, Lewis? I do. That's well, well slipped in there. <laughs> OK, so my calm tool just is composure. Be approachable, use respectful and unambiguous language, and manage dissent proactively, which means early, before it gets to be a real problem. Fair enough. Okay, now it's on you guys. Oh, let me just let me just uh, do it quickly. This is from um, the uh, anger and resistance module from the national class, but basically, it's just some guidelines for you. Um, uh, you, you, resistance and dissent are all part of this and anger are all part of the same process emotionally so if we address it we need to address it through a positive confront by confrontation it means we need to address it now it doesn't mean you get in somebody's face that word confrontation means address it now so it, it's got to be addressed through a positive interaction that you're having with that individual and if you don't address it, it's going to play it. It's going to play, rear its ugly head sooner or later. Um, just some stuff about anger and negativism. You know, you, if you let things go on, the game can swirl down and, and we lose control. And that's not good for anybody. Uh, if we are positive, we can get a win-win situation with players and allow them to move on feeling that they've been heard and that the referee understands what what their point of view was. Uh, as part of that, 
Uh, how many of you heard of that? Ask, tell, dismiss, which is the uh, kind of the the key phrase we use for dealing typically with with uh, people who are really stretching the, the limits of the laws. Uh, you know, we we first ask them to stop, and then we tell them to stop, and then 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 we dismiss them from the match. So it's sort of a like a like a warning, caution, a send off kind of ladder that you're working your way through although it's you don't have it's not that rigorous uh a few years ago there were there was a, an outfit that was at the ken Aston camp promoting a concept called verbal judo and the five-step hard stop is from the verbal judo uh, camp and what they were talking about there were there are three types of people in the world there are difficult people uh, there are compliant people which they, and then there are the class of people they call wimps, which are kind of the passive aggressive type people. And they they developed a strategy to deal with, within the context of a game to, 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 uh, to deal with these people. And it's very similar to ask, tell, dismiss. It's a little more nuanced, but it's, it's really not a lot different. Uh, the first thing is ask, makes sense, right? Why, why, would, why do we ask and, as opposed to command? Why do you think? We want to get agreement and understanding of what we're asking for, and and so part of asking is, hey, you know, uh, I I would like you to do this. I need you to do this. We're a team, and and do you understand that? Uh, you know, so so that you get agreement. Right. Oh, okay. So so yeah, that's your goal is to get agreement. But what's really good about asking? It's. <laughs> I don't mean to say it's a tautology, but it's it's asking. It's it's not okay. a com it's not a command. It's not an order. It's okay. Okay. hey, can you help me out here? I, I, we're okay. on the you okay. know, are we together on this? Okay. So what I'm what I'm trying to get to is when you ask someone, you're making them part of the solution. You're involving them into it. You're not just telling them what you. You're you're making them part of the process, and that's what the asking does. And a lot of people respond very positively to that. To that, they get to have agency in it. Yeah. So that's that's the key thing about the ask, is you're making it our joint problem, not just me yelling at you. Uh, also requires that you explain why. I need you to stop this because, you know, can, can you know, so you, you need to explain the why and give options. And not the options are not ultimatums. Options are either some of these these things can happen if you don't comply. Uh, when you get to step four in this, step four is where you're reaching the point where someone is not being compliant because the question they want you to ask is, is there anything I can say to get you to be compliant? Or, or is there anything I can say to get you to work with me to resolve this issue we're having? And you're going to get a either yes or no. And if you get a yes out of it, it's someone you can work with. If you get a no, the, the walls have come up and you don't have a lot of options for yourself after that. So this is again, part of a win-win strategy. What you're trying to do is get them to think about what they're doing and begin to agree, with, agree to work with you to, to solve this problem. And finally, the, the last step is to take action. Action. So it's very similar to ask, tell, dismiss. It's just a little more nuanced. Just something for you to think about uh, in terms of the way you, you do business out in the field, if it's useful to you. Fair enough? Cool. So let's look at some scenarios. A lot of these should be real familiar to you, Robert. Um, so let's look at the first one. 216U teams. Uh, top of the penalty area, blue defender pushes the attacker number eight who retains the ball and continues towards a goal. You apply advantage. Almost immediately, number eight, who was the player who was pushed, takes a shot, but he misses. And he turns to you and whines, what about that push, ref? I didn't have a fair shot on goal and I want a free kick. So now let the discussion begin. How are you going to deal with this in a win-win way? Feel free to chime in when you're ready.
Has everybody thought about it a bit? Yep. Okay, Chris, give me your take on it then. Uh, well, Mike, I would talk to the player and tell him that uh, he, he had advantage. He had control of the ball. And uh, I would have uh, blown the whistle if I see he, uh, uh, if that advantage did not uh, uh, take place. Um, I would explain my thinking to him. Okay. So that's, that's kind of a process you've named. What, what exactly would you tell? I'm the player. What are you going to tell me, Chris? You tell me. I'm Talk to me. I'm the, I'm the player. What are you telling me? Come on, what about that push, Rath? I didn't get a fair shot and goal, and I want a free kick. Well, you don't get a free kick because I gave you advantage. And I'm that keeping was, there's my no advantage there. There. <laughs> you had the ball, and you had the advantage, and I allowed play to continue. And as far as that other player that gave you the push, I would I will keep my eye on him uh, and uh, uh, make sure that something like this doesn't well that that it doesn't continue. Uh, if it does, then I'll address it then. Okay. Any comments on that? Um, I'm wondering if the player feels hurt there. Yeah. I don't know if he does or not. Any, any other thoughts, Robert? How about you? I'm still, uh, you know, learning and experimenting with how to deal with these situations. Okay, how are you going to deal but, with me? But, deal with me. I mean, one thing I could say is, uh, well, I gave you advantage there, red number eight, and you had a good shot. You just missed. Um, are you saying that? For the rest of the game, whenever you maintain possession of the ball after a, a, you know, a careless foul, you want me to just call it for you right there instead of giving you advantage? Ooh, what an interesting thought. And then he has an opportunity. Yes, ref, that's what I want. Okay, fine. No problem. Or, oh, no, maybe ref, um, I don't know, just forget about it. You know, I don't know what that player would say. Uh, no, n neither do we. But what, so, what do you think about that uh, that approach, uh, Keith? Are you still there? Or are you lifting boxes again? Well, I, I would like to add one more thing. Uh, okay. And that's if I see he's upset, I'm just going to try to uh, motion for him to calm down, and and even ask him uh, or tell you know just calm down and let me explain to you what happened. Um, but try try to get him to listen and to think without going off the end of the rail. Okay. okay. So, keep, so keep. yeah. So uh, I mean, if I heard this scenario right, we, we called advantage. The 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 player got the advantage. We we believe, and then but he wants the foul. So uh, and now he's he's upset about it. I think you have to read that as maybe there's not an understanding of what advantage is and you know uh it, but it's 16 you you know you would hope but but maybe you're saying you know i've, I've heard cindy say this and I, I don't mean to borrow from you cindy but where hey you're a really good player you know i wanted to give you the chance to to get through there and you know and 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 you know have a chance to score your goal or have a chance to do this so you can turn it around as a compliment like i thought you wanted that but certainly if that's not something you know, you know, you you can say something like, "Hey, I get it. If you don't if you don't like that, I'll, I'll be a little more mindful of the foul, and I'll look for that. I'll look to call that." You know, and and you can you can adjust the game. You don't have to call advantage. You do that because you believe there's advantage for the player. And if the player doesn't want it, well, you're not doing them a favor by awarding it. Okay, I I, I like the thought process there. Dave, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I think I think Keith summed summed it up pretty good. I can be sarcastic and say, "Well, I guess you're not good enough," but that's not winning anything. So. That's yeah, that's probably not a win-win approach. <laughs> no, I just I was just kind of like, yeah, that, I mean, but it, the way like Keith explained it 
is saying the same thing. Like I thought you were, you know, would want that opportunity and uh, continue on. And okay. you know, if if you look keep... at this, okay, if you look at the scenario, um, wh wh what what is your real expectation when you've played advantage, he's taking the shot, and now he's flying a little bit at you that he he missed. Do you expect that to be kind of a momentary thing, or do you expect that to linger? I definitely think it's going to be momentary. Behavior. I would hope it would be momentary. Yeah. So yeah. just frustrated, just frustration from missing the shot, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Let's look at the second scenario. Dang, it looks like the first scenario. Um. It's the same as the first scenario, but in this particular case, number eight takes the shot and misses, but instead of him turning around and whining, his teammate turns to you and speaking calmly and politely says, ref, sir, when a player puts his hands on an opponent and intentionally pushes, isn't that a foul? That one just seems to be easier to handle because you could explain to him the concept of the advantage and that you gave it to his teammate. But calling it's advantage fair. recognizes that it is a foul. Is a foul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Good point. What What is the player's potential motive for doing this? Well, trying to make a team give, give him a direct, direct free kick or, you know, instead of... A, the ball being turned over to the other team. Okay. What other motivation could he have? Well, the motivation would be disappointment by that player that they didn't score. Okay. Anything could, else? Could be fishing for a makeup call. Uh -huh. Trying to get in the referee's head, make the referee lose confidence. It could be a little bit, of, a little bit of gamesmanship going on there, right? I think that's the general category of what Cindy was talking about, and it's a little passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself why? Why is he saying that? And so how do you deal with him? You have a player in the first instance whose player took the shot, comes back, and he's frustrated because he missed. So you understand his motivation. He's frustrated because he missed. This one is a little more, a little more subtle because he's not an aggressive, not an aggressive comment to you. So what's the purpose? And maybe the purpose is to work inside your head. So how do you deal with him then? Cindy, yeah. what would you do, Cindy? I, I would confirm my decision. I said, hey, you know, your teammate number there, he's a really skilled player, and he got a good opportunity to get a shot off. So um, in that kind of situation, I'm, I'm going to give him the advantage. And, yeah, I recognize the foul, but I think number eight is such a good player that you guys are better off letting him take a shot. So uh, let's move on and play the game. Okay. How do you like that approach? Chris? Yes. I Well, I like it. Uh, hopefully, it'll settle the player down. Yeah, I mean, it's respectful, but to the point. Okay. Uh, let's... Scoot on to the next scenario, which is perhaps a little more interesting. Um, this is a tough game, testing your ability to control it. So you have to think about what this means to you as a, how you, what, what you are going through as a referee this time. So it's testing your ability. And a parent calls out loudly, the game is out of control. You better start calling something. And everybody hears it. And a lot of them just look at you to see how you're going to respond. Keith, any thoughts?
you know, that. Um, so one of the things that happens there and has this, uh, this has happened to me, <laughs> uh, yeah, right. this not maybe in those exact words, but you, you're already feeling the heat. You, you probably, you, you, you possibly do feel like the game's getting out of control a little bit, but you can't have people screaming that. So maybe that's a good opportunity to stop the game. <laughs> Go have a word with the coach about, you know, the touchline behavior and to, to reset your level of acceptance of what's happening on the field. Just um, I will take the Victor Hernandez approach to it and give yourself a minute to breathe, walk, slowly over to the touchline, have a conversation and come back. And so I think, I don't think that just because somebody says something from the touchline or a player complaint that it's just wrong. And, you know, if you're feeling a certain way, you, you can take some lesson from that and, you know, possibly adjust, adjust the way if you're feeling like you're, you're having a tough game and it's, and it's testing your ability. Maybe it's time to reset for a moment. Okay. Good. Good advice. What sort of thing would you say to the coach? I think I'd say something like, Hey coach, uh, you have a parent over here who's uh, yelling, uh, you know, at me from the touchline. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you go over and speak to him and, I have the game, you know, I'm the one who's making the calls. I'll, I'll, I can hear you. I can hear him, but I don't want to hear him yelling like that. Uh, it's disrespectful. Please speak to him and, and have him stop doing that. And then head back out, get agreement that he'll do it. I mean, the coach normally does that and then head back on out. Take care of the game. Okay. I, I would point out to the coach that, that parent is provoking his players and that parent is about to get his players to do something that could get them in trouble. So I need his assistance with, with stopping that parent before it provokes the players. That way he, he can see the advantage of doing that is to protect his players. I like that thought process. So you're giving the coach a, a, a care or a, 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 something he can glom onto that, that's impacting him and his team, or at least pointing out to him that the consequences of this are potentially a negative impact to his team. Uh, I, I, I like that. I like making the coach part of the process, assuming he's a positive part of the process. I didn't say he said anything, so I'm going right. to assume he is. Yeah. Good, I like those comments. Anything else? What's the key thing as referees we need to remember if we're in one of those games where we're we're skating on the edge and we know it? I like I like the idea of you know taking your time, the deep breath, walking slowly over to the coach and and buying yourself a little composure time. I call that. But uh, what what else is there any other things you could possibly do? Well, I think sometimes if it's, uh, hopefully it's, you know, the game's been going on for a while and you're within a, a reasonable margin of substitution uh, period and you can allow that to happen. And I think if you talk to the one coach where the, the, the parent is rough, but if you're losing control of the game or you feel like you're losing control, maybe go talk to the other coach too. And just like, hey, help me out here. You know, I understand and it may look like it's a little, you know, going, but we're trying to bring this back in line. And it shows that like both sides are getting listened to because if it's out of control, I think both sides are feeling it. Um, maybe one's more a little, a little more verbal than the other, but, you know, just because someone's not verbal doesn't mean that they don't feel that. So I think by, and it shows that both coaches, even the uh, offending sideline that um, you're going to the other sideline. So it looks like you're kind of in their, their bullpen also, so to speak that like, Hey, you're going to go talk to the other side and make sure that 
they're in compliance too. And they're not being singled out. Over. Okay, There's, that's an int interesting thought. In, in that particular scenario though, your language that you use needs to be very, very precise because the potential and just I'm going to throw something out there. The potential is is that you could undercut your own authority and credibility out there. What do you think about that? Lewis, any thoughts on that? Yeah, the, yeah, the authority challenge here, uh, it, if you know that you're struggling to control the game, they know you're struggling to control the game. There's no point denying it. And there's no point overreacting here because this is a symptom. Mm -hmm. The fix is to get the game back under control. Uh, so, you know, and this parent can simply be concerned. Like there was a team three game a few months ago where the referee was told by a player, there's going to be a fight soon. This wasn't a threat. This was an expression of concern. Um, and, and, you know, the player was spot on the, the referee got off lucky that nothing happened. Um, and so it's, it's good for them to be heard. And you don't have to start calling more things for that team. You do need to understand that there's an uncomfortable air around the field. They don't feel safe. Uh, they don't feel it's fair. They're, they're not having fun if they're concerned about safety and fairness at that point. And so, you know, I'm thinking, you know, we have a myriad, a spectrum of coaches. Um, so how to interact with this. And, you know, some referees can manage this directly with the parents and some would do best leaning on the coach. And, you know, one of my first thoughts is to look at the parent. You heard it. Everyone heard it. There's, there, you know, playing deaf here doesn't do you any favors. And, mm -hmm. You can give them a slow nod and even a slow nod with a an acknowledgement, like I got it, but I can't have you yelling that. You don't you don't have to say a lot. Um and then maybe break eye contact and some of that might they might feel you've invited a response. So they might say more. And at that point, I look to the coach, similar thing, eye contact help me out coach, um, you know, kind of gesture that. Um, and, you know, the real focus here has got to be reigning in the game because if this is being said, you've probably been missing some more subtle signs. So you need to turn your observing tools on at a high level and, your foul selection needs to become tighter, even if just for five minutes. And I don't think I don't think you're going to have much complaint for tightening that up. Okay, good. Some 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 good thoughts. I like that. Robert, you have anything to add? I haven't heard from you. Uh, no, I'm. I don't have any data right now. Okay. Well, let's uh, move on to the next one. Which next which I was, I, I, I'm sorry, I wanted to jump in. It is really hard to have that. I, I just want to say, I 100% agree with what Lewis said there. It is very hard when I think you're struggling and you know, and then somebody sticks a knife in, if you will. Yes, and, yes. And, 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 you have to be able to step back and go, well, you know, this is an issue. And, and I think Lewis is absolutely right. You're, you're not doing yourself any favor or anybody any favor by going, it's not happening, you know, by being 
you have to be able to go, yeah, okay, I, I need to I need to start addressing this in a in a way that's you just you just yeah, sorry. It's a difficult thing to do. It's just a, quite difficult, and and but it's a skill that you you need to develop. Uh, what I would point out is that if you go back to my calm tool, the first thing on the list was composure, and I, I think this is a point where you need to do a composure check as a referee and make sure you know I'm centered within myself before I start dealing with that. But I've got to deal with that instantaneously, pretty much. I, I, I can't let that go on. Uh, given our time, you got time time to do one more scenario, or do we want to cut it here, Lewis? I think the gang looks like they're ready for another one. OK. Here we go. This is a similar thing, except it's different. Uh, average intensity match seems to be well in hand. This is from the referee's viewpoint. Uh, Suddenly, a coach says loudly to no one in particular that the referee had better start calling it both ways. Uh, since you can hear this clearly, you, you assume that every member of the opponent's team can hear it too. So this is similar, but a little different. How do we address this one? Dave, any thoughts just to put you on the on the spot here? Put 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 me on the thought. I'm I, I've I've heard this <laughs> several times, and uh, uh, you know sometimes a little bit of humor might uh, work in there. I, you know, um, yeah, a little bit, sometimes a little humor might work and, and kind of ease the situation and. Um, you know, I, I've, uh, when the time is convenient, I don't, I don't want to stop the, the play for something like that. And it's like, you know, Hey coach, uh, you know, I'll call it when the other team makes a foul too. And, and, uh, just understand, you know, I don't, a lot of times I'm one of those guys that does, doesn't have a dog in the fight, you know, so I'm just calling the game the way I see it. And, you know, you can help me out here and kind of keep the voice down and, I understand your opinion and, and, you know, that's, that's great, but, you know, let's, let's, let's make sure the kids have fun out here and keep on playing. And I think sometimes it just, it goes back to that. Hey, I listened to you. I heard you. Let's just stop the, the, the loudness and then we can move on. If it continues, then you have no choice, but to, you know, go, go to the next, next step. Um, and, uh, you know, start telling them, I don't want to hear that again. Yeah. But I think that the first incident is just going to ask them to a little bit of cooperation. Okay. Do you agree? Do you, do you, do you, do you agree that, do you we, agree need that we need to address this? I'm sorry. What was that again? Do you agree? I that agree we... that it needs to be addressed. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. I think, I think. I wouldn't stop play. To I, address I, right. I'd say right. that's. Exactly. I actually might stop play on that. I, I find that 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 particular comment to be particularly toxic and also clearly meant to uh, stir up the touchline. Um, I, I think that particular comment needs to be stopped and now. Now, would I, would I caution that? No, but that would be a line that I would need to address immediately that's not, that comment that particular comment is no good and it's not it's not productive it doesn't actually uh, provide any kind of insight into how the game's going uh, other than this coach who's disrespectful um, yeah I, I think that actually that particular comment is quite a bad one okay so so we've seen a couple of different thresholds here and that's good because we are different people so any 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 other good comments, Keith? I also like Dave's comments. Any 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 other comments from folks? Well, I was thinking if it's the first time that something like this happens, that I would I would do a drive-by. I'm lo I'm I'm along that uh, touch line, and I'd kind of motion, uh, kind of 
calm down, uh, say, I hear you, coach, and I've got it, and then continue. If I hear anything else, uh, uh, then I, I might have to stop the game, or I would wait until there is a stoppage in the game. Okay. I, I think I would try to minimize it and maybe use a little bit of passive aggressive humor. I think I would respond and say, absolutely, coach, thanks. Okay. Sometimes that can buy you something. But remember, we're looking for win-wins. So I think we all agree that you can't just let it pass. You need to do something at some level to acknowledge the comment. Um, I kind of agree a little bit with Keith because this is actually a pretty, in general, this can be a very, uh, he used the word talk, he used the word toxic, I used the word provocative. This can be a fairly provocative, provocative kind of a statement. Um, so I, I don't think it can go, you know, just ignore it. You need to acknowledge it at some level, I believe. Uh, Lewis, any final comments on this one? Yeah, this is a tough one because you can't make a small, it's, it's hard to make a small deal out of it. If, if the coach is willing to say this from 40 yards away, it's not just that you're quickly moving by them. Uh, they're clearly not shy. They feel strongly. And yeah, yeah, this is, this is a, a, a tough one to handle with a win-win. Um, mm -hmm. and I think <laughs> the, the best one I had for this recently, um, was, uh, it actually worked way better than I expected. The coach was very confrontational. I didn't want to get into a confrontation with the coach because it wasn't going to end well for him and it wasn't going to serve the game too well. So the coach was giving me some nonsense like this. And so I turned to the captain and said, can you please talk to your coach? Because if I go over there, it's not going to be good for your team. So do you think you can help out? And the kid walked over um, and then the coach, you know, had some more words for me. And the kid followed suit and left some words for me. So I, I cautioned the kid again, knowing that going to this coach was going to be a problem. And completely unintended. I, I wasn't thinking this many steps ahead. The coach's response seemed to be really shamed that this kid took the card for them. Um, and the coach didn't have anything else to say. So that's definitely one I'm keeping in my back pocket because I didn't plan it, but I really liked it. And that was a way I didn't have to deal with the confrontational coach, but I still address the issue. It worked out very nicely. Okay. I thought you were going to say the player walked over to the coach and, and told the coach, Dad, the ref says you have to be quiet. No, I, I thought that was going to happen too. I've had that one too. So. Okay. Uh, uh, good comments. Uh, as I say, this this one this one can be a bit of a trap. It depends on what's going on in the in the game, the the temperature of the game, and what's been going on. But it, this one has the potential to be a trap. And you just as again, you need to run through your composure. You need to be approachable. You need to watch your language, and you need to deal with this early. That said, I think we're probably done for the evening. You think, uh, Lewis? Let's see. So we have eight, 10 scenarios total. Um, Phil, if, if you want to do, if you want to get to the halfway point, I'm all for that. But if uh, you're ready to stop, uh, for those who don't know, we're going to continue through those scenarios next week. So we might have time to get through more than five next week. Right. Yeah. Um, do you feel strongly either way, Phil? Uh, I, I can go either way. It depends on what, what you guys want to do out, the, out, in, out in virtual land here. Well, I can stay on. Go for it. Okay, let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's move on to another one at least. Yeah, I'm okay. looking at number four. I'm, I'm curious how you do this one, Phil. Okay. Uh, this is something simple. 
Okay, during during a pregame, during your pregame, the coach asks you, "Do you understand stand offside? We need to know if you can handle the offside trap." I've had this happen, and they say, "What's offsides?" <laughs> okay. <laughs> Does no, I, no, no, I, I actually didn't do that, but I have had that happen and it's insulting, right? And it is. And I just, I just answer very matter of fact, like, yes, of course we understand offside coach. We'll keep an eye out. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else would be productive there. It's, it's obviously both a, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 it's disrespectful, I think. Um, maybe it's actually coming from a good place, but your interpretation of what it is, I don't, I don't know if you interpret it one way or the other, it's, if that's helpful. A answering it in a matter-of-fact manner, I think, is the most useful and just move on. I might so ask the coach, uh, are you telling me that your, uh, your team is going to be pulling an offside trap a lot? And and uh, then I'll, if he says yes, I'll, I'll tell him, okay, I got it, and leave it. Okay. So, so one can approach this also with, uh, with a little bit of humor as well, right? Yeah, yeah, co yeah coach, we, we do understand offside. One of the interesting discussions we had at the last Aston camp, and I don't, if, I don't know if you remember this, Robert, was the use of the question to 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 help understand that? You, so if the coach says this to you, you say, uh, "Yeah, yeah, coach, we 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 do understand offside. Why do you ask?" <laughs> Remember that discussion, Robert? And I thought that's an interesting question because it involves. It, it's going to lead to a little bit of debate that you might or might not want to have. But it kind of throws the ball back into the coach's ballpark to to give you a little bit of feedback about why this is going on. And it sort of puts him on the spot a little bit. But it also is an acknowledgement that you're listening, which is one of the key things. And it's not a disrespect. I don't think it's a disrespectful question from the referee. It's like, yeah, we understand. Why, why do you ask? Uh, because one of the things you could learn is that he had a bad experience with referees in his last game. And that may be useful for you to know in terms of managing this game, because it's obviously still weighing on his mind. Uh, it might be he was just trying to do a little gamesmanship, in which case he's just going to he, he will just give you some little fluff answer and, and, and you're done with it. So I don't know. What do you guys think about that kind of an approach? I like it. I, I might also. Uh... After that, include in my uh, referee brief to uh, give the, my ARs a heads up that uh, uh, they might be seeing offside trap repeated. Fair enough. Keith, you've been quiet. Uh, yeah. Um, I, back to the the why do you ask? And I would almost say, well, do you, do you understand what offsides is? Um, I'm pretty sure we do or, or something. I, I mean, I think you're right. It is a trap. It's a, it's a trap question and it's based off of, they feel that they've been wrong probably in a previous game. I've had this happen several times where like, especially in the younger ages where like um, this happened. Can you tell me? And they're, and I, I don't think that they're looking. I think they're just looking for confirmation that they were right and the other referee was wrong. And I, I, I won't tell them that. I won't right. say like, well, I wasn't there. I don't know the situation, but I can tell you that the AR is in a better position than most of us on the field to make that determination. And I leave it at that. Okay. So respectful, polite. I like that. I like what you said too. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm ascribing bad intentions to the coach right off the bat, asking a question like that. And I suppose it could be 
uh, you know, it could be actual curiosity about whether you actually understand it. Um, you know, they say, you know, what is it? Don't ascribe to malice what can more appropriately or more easily be ascribed to ignorance <laughs> or, or, you know, <laughs> so, so maybe there wasn't malice there. It, it, it seems like gamesmanship. It seems like trying to, trying to establish some kind of order before yeah. the game with the okay. referee, okay. especially if it's a higher level game. Now, if this was a 10 U game or 12 U maybe, and you're a regional referee possibly. Yeah. But I've had this asked, you know, at upper level games where you're, you know, the whole crew is an advanced or national crew and, you know, that's gamesmanship. I, I really do believe that. So. Right. Keep in mind that this scenario was developed for the national class, not for the regional class. Yeah, I, I, then, I, then I stand by my first answer. Okay. <laughs> Cindy? Actually, right. I, when this type of thing happens, I kind of try to put my coach hat on and kind of turn it into a collegial type conversation that can work on developing a relationship. I can learn about why he's asking it. He can feel that I understand the game. And, and I would try to turn this into a nice collegial conversation that, that we can use to build our relationship. Okay, good, good point. I like that. So the, the the words you the words you might use to start the conversation would be like what, Cindy? Oh, I might say, uh, yeah. Do you like to do you like to use it a lot? You know, it's uh, yeah. I would talk. Yeah, that's a strategy that that you know can can really work sometimes. You know, have you had a lot of luck with it? And you know, try to just probe them with you know questions that start a conversation where we can start talking about the technique. Yeah. Okay. And, and you can get them away from whatever path they're on and get them talking about their last game or like, you know, how does, how does that normally work for you? And, um, and then the next thing you know, they're, they're not trying to figure out if you're going to mess up their game plan. They're just talking about things in the past and then they'll feel heard. So. Yeah. Good, good comments. Good comments. I don't want to convey that I feel threatened by the question. I want to turn it into something to build a relationship on, to start a conversation and turn it away from whether there was malice in it or not, just completely turn it away from that. Right. Good, good, very good point. I like that. Okay. Shall we try the fifth scenario and is that what you want to end up, Lewis? Hey, that sounds that sounds great to me. Okay, um, let's yeah. Let's uh, let's look at this one. Last one for the night. Our referee is momentarily distracted. That never happens, right? And looks up to see an angry forward on the ground. Comments from the crowd indicated the referee missed something. Uh, several players complained bitterly about the non-call. The victim looks to the referee for something anything so how do we deal with this run screaming from the field i like that that works the first yeah. thing i do is look at my ar because they probably saw it okay that's a good that's a good place you can get information from and uh depending on what he tells you so or she he or she tells you but what if your AR looks back at you with the deer in the headlights look like, I have no idea what's going on out there? Now you've got a number of players ranting to you about something you didn't call. How do you, how do you deal with it? Well, one way you can deal with it is make a call that you didn't see. Um, that's not the right answer. That's right. Uh, the other answer is, you know, maybe just acknowledge, well, I didn't see what happened, but, you know, we need to continue play and let's play on the best way we can. Um, 
Okay, uh, let me let me point out a fact that's not quite so obvious here. Uh, the ball is still in play. Blow the whistle. Why? What's your reason for blowing a whistle? I would say, I mean, if you blew the whistle, you could say it's for safety of a player, right? Oh, so we have a player on the ground, so you're talking about doing an injury check. You're doing an injury check, and then as long as someone has clear possession, you can do a drop ball at the restart of play. So I would I would blow the whistle for an injury check, but I, it would be uh, to take a minute, to take a second, couple seconds here to gather some information and to kind of calm calm the emotions down and you know yeah i can't make a call that i didn't see but i can say i'm sorry i can't make a call i didn't see but what happened and 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 do you know the player that that did this and then i can listen to him briefly and say you know i'll, I'll watch out for that from now on and that's all I can do right now. But I mean, I would actually, but I would look at my AR, of course, to mm -hmm. see if there was information there. But if there, it, this is kind of piggybacking on the idea that the AR had no, could not right. help. <laughs> right, assuming the AR can't help you. I would pray to God if my AR saw it. <laughs> so would we all. Any other comments? Well, well, to that, um, I've got a line from from Ken Aston. Um, it starts off in bold, never blow the whistle unless it is necessary to do so. When the referee blows the whistle, he is announcing to the world that he has reached a decision. He is obliged to reveal his decision immediately. The thinking referee uses all the time he can to get deliberate on decisions and definitely if we blow our whistle and then we run to our ar we look around that's not a strong look and it's not a perfectly strong look to completely miss the call too <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and we can own up to it you uh, think uh, but but owning up to it is 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 quite redeeming and you know one way you know so the ball is still in place so you can you can do the run by as the player gets up you can say hey look did i you know did i miss something what did i miss there i hear you and you know as they're they're frustrated they're frustrated they're coming at you and you're saying i hear you're frustrated what did i miss and ah you know something that we can't advise because we don't touch the players but if you're refereeing adults if you walk over give them a hand, help them get up and say, hey, looks like I missed something there. What's up? That's going to show that you care, that you put in the effort and they're going to feel heard. Um, so I think owning up to it, you know, we, yeah, like, like Ken Aston says, we blow the whistle now so we've made a decision and we need to reveal that decision immediately. We, we don't blow the whistle to buy ourselves time to think. So what you're really saying is when we blow the whistle, we have to have a plan in mind of exactly why we blew that whistle and what we're going to do with our time. Um, mm. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing about owning up to a mistake, is that done properly? Is that respectful to the player and his needs? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. So you've got the respect and you're respecting their game. It's their game. You're respecting their game. And you're admitting, hey, I didn't see it. I'm sorry. It is um, only that, that is only benefited when I've done it, but it depends on the personality of the referee. Uh, absolutely. I swear it never works after the fourth or fifth time I do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you can't do it a million times a game. <laughs> One time. That's a joke. Time, you know. 
yeah, it kind of loses its effectiveness if you're doing it uh, more than once. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think what you do also has to be modified depending on the level of the game, the age group you're dealing with. Okay. Uh, most, mostly what we've talked about are like upper level games. Correct. But, but if I were doing this with a 10U, uh, I might want to, to change that somewhat. Well, with the 10U, the injury check is a lot easier to sell. Yes. Uh, because it's, it, it says, I'm concerned about the safety of this player. I need to check this player out now. It's a lot easier to sell on, a, on an eight-year-old than an 18-year-old. And the yeah, uh, uh, 13-year-old is somewhere in between, right? Yeah, and let's not forget, they all go to drama class. <laughs> <laughs> they all watch soccer on TV, and that is a drama class in itself. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 key, the keys here are, as a referee, in, the, in this type of scenario, you have a number of decisions to make <clears throat> because the ball's in play. So you're having to decide, you have a player on the ground. It doesn't say if he's in front of you or behind you. I, I don't know. Uh, but you were distracted and when you looked around, the forwards on the ground. So assuming you're trailing play, he's in front of you. He or she is in front of you. Uh, so you, you, you miss something, but play is going on. So you have to make a decision about, do I need to stop play because he's injured? If it's saying he's looking at you for something, he's probably not injured, the implication. But you also have a number of players being very vocally battering at you, a number of players. So the question, the next decision you have to make is, is this going to evolve into something that I really need to stop, play for, and deal with? So you've got a couple of different decision points. And this is where we, I talked about at the beginning of the, the, the session about the moment of truth. You are at a moment of truth here. What you are going to do is going to set a tone for what's going to happen for the next several minutes. So if you stop play, you have to have made decisions there that either there's an injury or or I really need to deal with all those players who are masked around and sniping uh, at me uh, because that's going to threaten game control and it's going to be more important to deal with that than to let play continue. So those are the sorts of decisions that you have to go through and the decision you make as I said, is going to set the tone for the remainder of the match. So a lot of that has to do with your read. We can't get it from this, but a lot of that is going to have to do with your read of the body language of the players, what they're saying, the temperature of the match, the level of skill. All, all those factors come into play as you're, as you're making this decision in the, in the second and a half that you have, you have to make the decision. Okay, any, any final comments? I'll turn it back to you, Lewis. All right. Well, thank you very much, Bill. Um, I'm glad you got through the first spot. I really wanted to hear your approach on it. And thanks everyone for participating. Uh, we got quite good participation this time. This time. Everybody spoke. Um, except Scott, but I don't see him there anymore. So he may have gotten he left. Got he, he had left. to go. He left. Okay. I know. I also got to organize my referee closet and do inventory, which is what we had to do tonight. They, it sounds like an exciting night. Yeah. So awesome. exciting. So exciting. Yeah. I wish yeah. you all were here. <laughs> so, so next week we get to dive into the national games. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you there. Uh, it's going to be nice and hot. Uh, I am here now. Um, it was uh, 96 today. So. <laughs> yeah, that was lovely. Uh, I think the the AQI is probably over 150 right now too. Yeah. Um, so, uh, ah, you know what? It says 34, but my lungs tell me otherwise. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I can't rely on that. Uh, yeah. So as we as we prep for the national games, um, we have the uh, next week. We're going to do another session. Uh, I'm thinking Monday or Tuesday night. Does anyone have a strong preference? 
Tuesday, we're going to have a field session before we go to the national games. It'll be at 6.30 at Hunting, um, at uh, Kimball Park in Ventura. All right, so we'll do Monday night then. Um, just a big ramp up for uh, the end of the last term of the season for us, probably. Um, so with that, there's going to be another play of the fortnight that's just about done. And I, I'm putting back in the chat um, the, the link to the plays of the fortnight for this season so far. Um, there's a very interactive one there. Um, maybe set aside a few minutes with your, your morning coffee or with your ice cream before bed at night. Uh, make a nice little treat out of the experience for yourself. I know there's a lot of investment put into that one. Um, and I know of, of the people here, Robert completed it, Keith completed it. Um, and I, I think that's-, I, think that's I, did, I, didn't get to, I didn't get through it, it crashed out on me. And so I don't know if you got oh, some wow. responses. That's why maybe my response was incomplete. Okay. okay. So I'll go back and do it again. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, it's definitely an interesting one. And there's there's another one coming out uh, very soon. So um, with that, I want to thank Phil very much for offering some great material. Again, great discussion and everyone for, for feeding that discussion. Yeah. I'm going to end the recording here um, and I'm not kicking anybody out.